Okay, so I would like to add something to my original G7400 video on my channel. So as I labeled that video as uh, cheap AVX512 monster, yet I couldn't run AVX512 at all on either of those two G7400 CPUs I used on that video. So on that video I overclocked two different G7400 CPUs up to like 5.4 to 5.5 gigahertz in uh, tests like Cinebench R20 with decent memories etc. But I just couldn't get AVX512 to work even though the BIOS of the Z690 Dark Kimpin did support it as I could run that those instruction sets with other CPU models like a 12300 as well as 12900K, 12600K and so on. And even as I saw AVX512 uh, negative offset option inside the BIOS, I just couldn't get the whole thing to work. So the whole AVX512 instruction set is not actually even meant for the older Lake 12th gen CPUs. So now on these newer bat batches, Intel is already disabling the AVX512 support altogether. So it was never meant for these CPUs. It was uh, integrated in the earliest Alder Lake CPUs by accident. The whole instruction set is initially made or meant for the high-end workstation options. Like if you purchase any LGA3647 CPU, like for example the W3175X, you will obviously have AVX512 support. But anyways, so here on the middle is the G7400 I used on that video. So the other one, the worst one, the better one I sold to my team member Clemens from Germany. But here is the worst one. And you can see if you look carefully, it has this uh, uh, rectangle over here on top of the uh, Intel text over here. So the rectangle or square-ish marking means that the AVX512 instruction set has been disabled at the hardware level from this particular CPU. And this is the very same CPU that's on the thumbnail of my video I already mentioned about. So uh, if the CPU has this rectangle over here, there's absolutely no way to get AVX512 to work as it's already disabled by Intel at the factory. So that's why I actually searched for G7400 which has this halo or circle marking on top of the uh, word Intel over here. So here is Intel Pentium G7400, very same uh, markings as on the center CPU, but the only difference is this halo marking instead of that square-ish or rectangle marking on, to on top of the uh, Intel text. And this one did have AVX512, as you could see in my previous video, I could get the rank 2 score in Ycruncher 1 billion, which can utilize that instruction set. And if you look carefully at the instruction sets list, in CPU-Z there is AVX512F marking right after AVX2 in CPU-Z, and whereas with this CPU or with the other G7400 I used on my original video, there was no AVX512 instruction set mentioned at all in CPU-Z. And the same thing goes for 12600K and my 12300. All of them have this uh, same halo marking on top of the uh, Intel text over here. And I could get AVX512 to work just fine. So why crunch your 1 billion record score with the 12300? And with these uh, K CPUs like the 12600K, 12400K, etc., you can get AVX512 to work as long as you just disable the add-on cores or the E cores. So with these CPUs, you don't have it uh, working by default. You need to disable the add-on cores. But with these uh, non-K CPUs like the G7400, 12300, etc., as they don't have the add-on cores at all, they will have AVX512 out of the box as long as they have the circle marking. So you don't need to do any change inside the BIOS to get the AVX512 to work. You only need to flash an AVX512 supported BIOS for your motherboard as long as there's one for your motherboard model. There's at least one for all of the high-end 
like Z690 motherboards, like the Apex, the Tachyon, the Aqua OC from ASRock, the Dark Kimpin from EVGA, I think there's one for the Unify X from MSI, etc. So that's all you need pretty much. And of course, if you want to maintain stability, you can use the negative offsets for both AVX slash AVX2 and AVX512. Just bear in mind the heat difference, which Buildzoid already covered pretty well. So AVX2 is much harder on the older Lake CPUs than AVX512. So you actually need a lower multiplier for AVX2 compared to AVX512. So in my experience, AVX512 is fine at a frequency of, let's say, like 100 MHz lower than what's possible in Cinebench R15 or R20. And for AVX2, you might need, let's say, like offset of 2, so 200 MHz lower frequency. That's at least what I've seen this far. But with the highest core count models, like the 1200K, etc., you might need to use like a larger drop in the, in the clock frequencies because of the higher heat loads on those larger CPUs. Now with the 1200KS, I think it's even harder to find a 1200KS which supports uh, AVX512. It's the newest Older Lake CPU that came to the market and I think all of them will have, I think nearly all of them have AVX512 disabled already at the hardware level. So I think it's extremely hard to find 1200KS with this halo circle marking on top of the word Intel on top of the IHS. So that's pretty much it. So if you really want to find AVX512 supported Older Lake CPU, you can easily just walk around in a store if they have, let's say, like tons of these CPUs on the shelf in some PC or hardware store, whatever. You can just look at the IHS from that little like peak window, which is usually uh, like visible on those uh, boxes, but actually on the 1200K and so on, they don't have that very same packaging as they used to have this far, but at least with the Pentium retail packaging, they still have the very same like uh, uh, type of packaging. So you can actually see the IHS without opening the whole uh, CPU retail package, but it's harder now with the uh, uh, highest end options like the Core i9 CPUs, which are inside that little like uh, round-ish packaging, however you want to call it. But anyways, so uh, that's pretty much it. So uh, hopefully this cleared some uh, questions as some people were asking about this whole thing on my original G7400 video as I couldn't get the whole thing to work even though I advertised about it and I could run AVX512 with, with some other CPU models. So that was the only reason. It was just uh, I didn't have AVX512 supported G7400 CPUs back then, so that's why I couldn't run Y-Cruncher, 1 billion, etc. with the best performance. So uh, if this video helped you out, then please give me a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to my channel, maybe check out my Patreon page as well if you want to support my work, and yeah, thanks for watching one of our videos once again, and I will see you on the next one.